from a little theater off Broadway on 47th Street. It's theater time with Lily Tomlin and an all-star cast. Okay, that's a signal coming through the COS electrostatic stereophone system, also known as the Studio Monitor SESP.9 or ESP.9B headphones. Integral to the system is this little box called the Energizer. What it does is takes the speaker output of your amplifier, feeds it into here, and then feeds it out to the headphones to this multi-pin jack. And there's a switch here that allows you to listen to the speakers or the headphones. I like school. And when I'm asked to read aloud, I read aloud. He cannot find the boat. There is water all around the island. What I'm using for a signal is a record I recorded onto a little digital recorder. I'm running that through a little realistic uh, amplifier. And it actually seems to give a pretty good signal. I tried running the system. Instead of using a speaker output, I tried using a headphone output. And that just was not uh, loud enough. So this seems to work pretty well right here. You'll notice I have two of the energy boxes. And... They're both called the E.9 Energizer. There's an E.9B also. The front of these are identical, and the functions on the back are, well, nearly identical. This is the wire that connects to the speaker output of your amplifier. Um, and then these are where you connect your actual speakers. So when you switch to speakers here, it comes out through here, etc., etc., etc. So that's the system, basically a box and a pair of headphones and uh, wires to connect it to your stereo system or whatever other amplifier you have connected to the speaker outs. So I've turned these around. You can see we have two of these. Right away we notice in the upper left hand corner this has a switch that says see instructions. It also says normal. This has a label, no such switch. Another difference this has a 3-pin AC cord. This has a 2-pin cord. I have the 3-prong three, uh, three cord for the uh, bottom one, but not for this one. But this is the one we've been uh, listening to. Let's... Theater Time with Lily Tomlin and an all-star cast. So it works in the speaker mode and it works in the headphone mode without having any AC power going to it. The user's manual says indeed that you can use this thing without AC power, but the AC power line when hooked up does provide for some very precise audio measurements to be made. So my question would be, what is the difference in these models other than the fact that one has a label and the other has a switch? Obviously a switch has a function, and if this one doesn't have that function, what's the difference? As I said, there is a, a B model, and the ones I've seen online actually have like E9B printed here. But uh, there's a, there are other examples of the backs of these things that don't look like either one of these. This is one of the two I have. I'll call it Style 1. It's an E9, 115 volts operation. It has a label, no switches on the back. This one's Style 2, very similar, but it's 220 volts AC. Other than that, it seems to be identical to number 1, Style 1. Style 3 has reset buttons on it, and it has a fixed AC cord on it, that brown cord going into the back. The others just have removable cords, so that's Style 3. Style 4 is one of the ones I have. This one has no label, and it has the normal switch. And again, as you can see, there's a lot of variation here. And I don't think there's any literature out there that I've seen so far or discussions that address what really is the difference. We hear about the difference between the 0.9 and the 0.9b, but uh, is there something inter uh, an interim sort of transition in here that we should know about? I flipped them both around so you can see that the front panels are identical. So we have two identical energizer units, at least from the front. And I showed you earlier. And this is how the backs look. Obvious differences in the AC plug, in the switch, in the label. This looks to be the same. But I did just discover something else. 
that has what one one two three uh, screws on the bottom. This one has one two three four five six. So let's open them up and see what the difference is. Well, here's another difference between these. This one has two holes per side for a total of four to hold the cover on. This has seven holes. So let's see. Let's open it up and see if it looks like that. <laughs> no, not at all. Let's see. Yeah, I've got those pointing the correct way. That's that's a big difference. And here's the opposite side. These are closer, but again, different. There's jumpers for the uh, voltage. I don't think this one has jumpers. I think maybe it's just made for 115 volts. All right, back to the uh, first size that we opened up with the circuit board. And I had noticed before that the circuit board is down here. Well, I'm not the least bit qualified to determine what was changed in these, but it sure was a lot. The, the whole basic design changed. And again, I'm wondering if one of these is a Model B. And they just didn't mark them that way at the time. I would say this one with the label is perhaps the newest. If I look up the uh, owner's manual online, actually I downloaded a copy of it. This is covered in, I think, the very first uh, manual put out for these units, and it has the switch. So, as we contemplate the inside of these things, let me try to remember what the issue was with the original units. It had to do with the common wire for each side of the audio channel. So basically, if you have a left and a right channel, typically you'll have four wires, two for each side. Each side has what's considered a common wire. And you can feed those all in separately as four different wires, or you can bind the two commons into one wire and make it common to show what they call chassis ground. Okay, somebody's going to correct me on that, I know, but that's basically what it is. It's the kind of grounding system that the wires have. And some digital amps apparently didn't like having that sort of combined um, ground. So supposedly with the B-Series, they, um, they changed that and isolated the grounds. And I suppose I probably could try to stick a uh, a meter on this thing and see if there is, in fact, a connection on the uh, ground wires. I stuck an ohm meter on them, measured between the common points and grounds variously. And uh, they're both uh, common ground tied into the chassis. So I don't know what the modifications were here from the original, but uh, when you read online you see there's two models. There's like the E9 and the E9B. And one of these is not an E9 or E9B. It's Maybe it's an E9A or E9C or D or whatever. If you do have the model E9B, I'd love to see a photo of the back panel, and if you can, the insides of it. It'd be interesting to compare that with these two examples. Thanks a lot. Krusty Bob over and out.